example of uh, global integration. The top slide is uh, a picture of human brains, human uh, neurons in the human brain. And the bottom one is uh, Facebook connections along the, across the whole world. You can see there are certain conceptual similarities. There are centers communicating with each other in a way to give uh, rise to a brain or a global brain, global consciousness. So if we are moving to that scenario, I come back to my earlier, earlier assertion, saying that this has to be done quickly. And I'm asking, is there a way to accelerate this process? So nature is going to make us live uh, for a long time, but can we accelerate it ourselves? And the way to accelerate it, if everything is based on increasing our complexity, our cognitive complexity, and our dyna dynamical brain abilities, then perhaps by inputting cognitive information in our brain, we may be able to um, facilitate matters. And this has been done quite a lot in research with animals when they put them in either single uh, in a single cage or in an enriched environment cage. In other words, they put mice with uh, colorful toys and bells and mirrors and things going round and round. And it was found that people, uh, animals that live in an enriched environment have a lot of not brain um, improvements, as you can see here, but also many other improvements. Yeah. Environmental enrichment, cognitive information <laughs> going to the brain, improves vision, improves um, immunity, it improves uh, behavior. Somehow it upregulates antioxidant defenses. So you in increase the cognitive input into your brain and your antioxidant defenses work better. This to me sounds like a very good anti-aging uh, technique. And um, one of the most important things is that increased cognitive input also affects the DNA. It causes epigenetic changes on the DNA. It changes the DNA, how the DNA works and how it, it forms proteins, enzymes and other factors in order to cope with this input of information and by doing so all of these new formed uh, enzymes and products and so on also help our body fight aging damage and it's not, I'm not just talking about doing a few puzzles and just keeping generally active I'm talking about purposeful intentional cognitive, cognitive input plus um, seeking novel situation, novel stimuli, innovative environments, so, uh, interact through society, through technology, and also through within our own brain. Uh, apart from external inputs, our brain uh, generates internal inputs as well, in the thoughts, uh, meditation, as we will see later on. And it's a whole idea of input that touches upon philosophy as well, uh, perhaps seeking to achieve excellence or seeking virtue or brilliance, or avoidance of mediocrity, avoidance of routine, all of these things, what they are basically, are information that gets into our brain. It's not anything magic or anything nebulous, it's photons or chemical signals that get into our brain, force our brain to work in a particular way, force our brain to affect the DNA that supports this function of the brain and the rest of the body. Therefore, it affects our rate of aging. And uh, this is some, just some more information about how the DNA changes it's through DNA methylation and uh, uh, mitochondrial RNA and so on. But it has been shown repeatedly in animal and some human experiments as well. It's not, it's not anything strange. This
it's, it has been shown that it has been happening it affects not only the brain but also other parts related to aging. And coming back to this slide again, you can see that say uh, if we input information into the brain that will go back to the neuron, improve the neuron, affect the neuron, that will affect the DNA. The DNA will affect through neuron brain society. Society will affect DNA. Pollution. We created pollution. Okay? This is something that we created, but pollution in other West society now is affecting our DNA. The main sperm is reducing due to pollution. We created that. So, DNA is being affected. And if we are going to move into global integration, a human enhanced by technology and enhanced by um, thoughts and cognition, then you can see how the interplay between DNA, brain, neurons and global integration is like a circle, one affects the other. And my suggestion at this stage, I have other suggestions as well, is to input information into the brain in order to affect all other steps. So, basically what I'm saying, this is going to happen anyway, but in, all, in order to accelerate the process, we leave um, Darwinian evolution behind, we don't need it any longer, up to now it has being very valuable, but from now on, through technology, we don't need it. Therefore, we can achieve indefinite lifespans through molecular mechanisms that I explained, uh, by helping nature to increase our intellectual sophistication. And uh, my theory is the Elpis theory, in other words, extreme lifespans through perpetual equalizing interventions. One of the interventions that I mentioned is this increased cognitive inputs. Touches upon many other um, areas, like conventional biology, hormesis, which is the partly environmental enrichment, synthetic biology, future, transhumanism, everything comes together in order to help us as humans enhance ourselves cognitively, intentionally, and thus see if we can accelerate the process through a personal developmental singularity. Singularity, as we all know, is the achievement of more and more in less and less time. And this, uh, in indefinite lifespans, I think falls within the singularity framework to achieve more and more in a matter of decades. And considering that technology already started in the 60s, 70s, 80s with global communications, if it's going to be a matter of decades, we, we only have another 40 to 50 years. So what I'm saying effectively is that within 40 to 50 years, we would be able to achieve indefinite lifespans. That's the main um, aim of my research and my speech. Thank you.